Using a guide dog for mobility is fantastic, but what happens when you get stuck in the house because of a worldwide pandemic? I mean, how do you keep up your skills? Well, today, in this video, I'm going to share how Koa and I have been doing it the last month. What's up VIPs, Derek here, back with another video, and I've had my guide dog Koa, who is a beautiful black, actually brindle lab, uh, I've had him for, gosh, it's been almost a year. July is when I received him, so it is May currently, so I've had him almost a year. And for the first probably three-fourths of that time, maybe even you know, seven-eighths of that time, I'm not great at fractions. Anyway, for the first big chunk of that time, it was great. I mean, we were walking everywhere, we were going places, it was just wonderful. Then a big pandemic came along and said, oh, no, no, need you to stay home and not do anything. Well, here's the thing. Guide dogs need to go and do stuff to, you know, keep up their skills. And I, as a person, need to be part of that. I can't just send them out on their own and say, hey, go ahead and good luck with that. So we've got to do it. But how do you do it? Well, I want to talk about it because I think it's important and maybe it'll be helpful for somebody out there. By the way, if you're new around here, my name is Derek and I help people just like you to discover life after sight loss. If you're interested in learning more about how to live your life to the fullest as a visually impaired person or a sighted supporter, well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss another single video. It is so windy out here. What is the deal? Anyway. All right, so how have I been doing it? How have Koa and I been making it the last month or so? Well, let me go ahead and hit a disclaimer before we get started. I'm not an expert. I'm not a guide dog expert or a guide dog trainer or anything like that. I'm just a person who has used guide dogs and currently have one, and I'm just sharing my story with you. If you have more questions, whether you have a guide dog or are thinking about it, always talk to the experts. Reach out to a school or something like that, and they'll be able to give you more information. This is just my personal take on what I've been doing to keep up our skills while the quarantine has been going on. All right, so first of all, we have been walking different routes in our neighborhood. Now, obviously, whenever you stay at home, you gotta get out a little bit, right? You gotta get out and, and take a walk or whatever. And we have a, a neighborhood. We live in a suburb area. So we go out and we walk our neighborhood. We have a lot of sidewalks and we can go out to the street and left to right and go to other neighborhoods and things like that. So we have some good walking area. In fact, it's probably three to four miles of the ability to walk around. However, that can get pretty mundane pretty fast because it's like, oh, I remember seeing this house yesterday and the day before and the two weeks before that because that's how it goes. We walk around the same neighborhood, but we've tried to make it a little bit different. We'll go out and we'll turn right instead of left or we'll go straight instead of, you know, turning or whatever the case is. Uh, we have a new neighborhood that's being built right now. So we are going into that neighborhood and that's been new and challenging mostly because you never know what's going to be built or not built in that neighborhood. One week you go in and there's no house and all of a sudden you go the next week and there's a house there and uh, you know, sidewalks are appearing everywhere. So it's been interesting. So we try to take different routes. So if you take that tip, you know, something like that, if you have a guide dog, yes, it could be very boring. However, try to make it as interesting as possible. Don't set your dog up to fail necessarily, but take them in places maybe that uh, you've gone before, but you get there a different way. Instead of going to the left and coming around, go to the right and come around, you know, that sort of thing. So trying new routes in a very familiar area is one way we've been keeping up the skill set. Secondly, we've had some mental stimulation going on. Obviously, mental stimulation is important for a guide dog, you know, keeping their mind up and ready to go. And we do that a few different ways, obviously continuing to work as much as possible. But having obedience, you know, sit down, stay, that sort of thing. Working on recall is always good. And we'll talk about more of that in a minute. But for example, my son taught my dog how to roll over. I don't know exactly what they were doing, but all of a sudden the dog rolls over and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so now when we get his toy, he'll come over to us and we do the thing and it rolls over. And it's great because it's stimulating his brain. He's challenged to be like, okay, oh, I got to do this. And there's something to happen. It's great. Mental stimulation for the dog. You can do that in the house, out of the house, wherever you are. And it can be as simple as having them sit and wait. For example, when we go out to the backyard to play, uh, we, we sit. Well, I, I don't sit. The dog sits. But the dog sits and I make him wait for just a minute. I step out and then I say, OK, and he comes on out. Again, it's not a big deal, but it's just a little thing to keep his brain working, you know, functioning, that sort of thing, to keep his brain on task. And that's really, really important. So 
The second thing is mental stimulation whenever you get the chance. The third thing we do is actually just going for a walk and healing the dog. Now, I know this seems kind of like, well, aren't you supposed to work the dog? Well, yes, but when I'm in a very familiar area, I have enough sight where I can walk a certain way and a certain path and do a certain thing that I can just heal the dog. And so it's great because the dog works constantly and sometimes they just need a break. You know, guide dogs are not machines, they're not robots, they need a break. And sometimes I will just take Koa out for a little walk, you know, just a little jaunt, and we don't go real far necessarily because, you know, if I get too far away, I'm all of a sudden like, where am I? I don't know what's happening. But we go a little ways and he just heals and sometimes I'll stop and let him sniff around and then that sort of thing. And again, it's more mental stimulation. It's still working and because he's got to make sure that he's on my left side, he's not tugging on me, he's not pulling on the leash, that sort of thing. So it's still working, but it's just not guide work in that moment. So if you can take the dog just on a slight walk, again, doesn't have to be far, but healing is another great way to keep up his mental stimulation. And finally, playtime is so important for the dog. Playtime can look a lot of different ways. I mentioned going out in the backyard and letting the dog run around a little bit. Also, we have tug toys and we bought in this stick that looks, well, it's not a real stick, but it looks like a real stick because my dog is obsessed with wood. He will eat wood out of the fireplace if he could. He loves it. But we bought him this thing that looks like a real stick and he's just like obsessed with it. He thinks it's great. And he chews on it kind of like a nyla bone. So we've got all kinds of playtime that we can give him and he runs around and everything. And as I mentioned earlier about recall, playtime is a great time to work on recall because if you have a fenced in yard and he's out there running around like a psycho and you call him to you and he comes, that is really important. Because if for some reason he gets off the leash and he's running around, you wanna be able to call that dog back to you. And working on that in playtime is so important because it's not a work session, but you might have a few pieces of kibble in your pocket and all of a sudden you pull it out and you call him over and he comes and it's great, it's a huge deal. So playtime can be so, so important. Don't think playtime is only one way. It might be tugging, it might be running around, it might be rolling on the floor, a lot of different things, but playtime keeps up their physical activity as well as working their minds. So that's just a few things that we've been doing as a guide dog team uh, you know, over this last month. And I will say this, since we've all been at home all the time, my dog has bonded with my family a whole lot. As I mentioned, my son taught him to roll over. My kids, every time they come down the stairs, Koa always runs over to him. He loves my family, loves my wife, and really, really bonded since we've been home all the time. But it's been a really, really, really nice thing. So that's just a few things that we've been doing. Again, I'm not an expert, but maybe you've got some ideas based on what I've said today, and maybe you just wondered how I'm doing it. And those are just a few things that I've been doing to help keep my skills up as a guide dog handler and help my guide dog keep his skills up as well. So my question for you today is this, how do you stay mentally sharp during a quarantine, during a pandemic, during something like this? Look, we talked about guide dogs today and maybe you've got a story about your guide dog and how you keep their mental stability going, but what about you? How do you stay mentally sharp? Are the things that you do, do you read books? Do you write? Do you go out for walks? What helps you stay mentally sharp during something like this? I would love to hear about it and I know others would as well. So let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you liked today's video, if you found it helpful, well make sure to show your support by hitting that like button and giving us a big thumbs up and go ahead and share it out with somebody that you know. And like I said, if you're new around here, we'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another single video. Thanks so much for watching wherever you are. And until next time, remember that sight loss isn't the end, it's just the beginning. My name's Derek, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.